Hey, hope all is well. Praying that everybody day has been blessed so far and will continue to be. Today's topic is heal your inner child. Heal your inner child because it's affecting your life today. Do not allow what happened in the past to have power over you to where it's affecting your today's life. God is trying to move you forward, but it seems like you cannot let that go. You're going to have to let it go, even though it may hurt it, even though you may feel shame, you may feel guilty about some things, and you may feel hurt, God said, and you may be going through pain by it, and it's causing you to make some bad decisions and to treat people some kind of way that they don't deserve. Amen. So let me tell you something. Heal that inner child. But before I get started, allow me to say a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the anointing and the yoke destroying power. Thank you for your love and care and tender mercies. Thank you for your word. Father God, I ask that you forgive us for holding on to unforgiveness, for thinking about things that happened in the past. Lord God, your word tell us not to even think about those things or what we used to have or what we used to do back then. But Lord God, focus on our today. So Lord God, help us to focus on our today, Lord God, to forgive, Lord God, and to walk in our our newness, oh God. Renew our minds in you, oh God, in Jesus' name. Lord God, revive us in your love and kindness. Revive us in your word and in your truth. In the mighty name of Jesus. And may this word go forth and reach each and every person that is intended for, oh God. And Lord God, I pray that you heal everyone's inner child on this day. So may this message be fruit to their bosom, oh God. In Jesus' name, I decree and declare that's done. You all, the Lord says to Heal your inner child. Can't nobody do this but you, amen. He can deliver you, but you first going to have to know how to go to God with these things in Jesus' name. Well, a long time ago, I, I do a lot of writing and stuff like that. And he, you know, I was waking up and he showed me that folder where the first thing I open up, it says to heal your inner child. I already went through this process. So I'm here to help you on today. Amen. I hope this uh, adds to you. Amen. And the first thing I wrote down was how my family allowed a perverted uncle to stay around the family for years. He hurt many of us. He uh, molested and he touched and he said perverse thing clean up to the day he died and i was wondering like why would they allow him to stay around us and he know and they know he was hurting us he would know that he was hurting you know some of the young girls in the family and saying perverse things and sleeping with his own daughter and they still kept him around i didn't understand that but at the same time i had to forgive them and i had to forgive him and i had to live my life amen so god told me one day he says to write down what you thinking and why does it hurt you and what was you thinking then and how did it hurt you then and if you could what would you go back and change what would you go back and say to that little girl and so I wrote down the things about, you know, how I felt like the family kept him around when they shouldn't have, how I would have protected the girls and boys in the family more than I could now. And I would tell them, you know, it's OK, it's all right. And, you know, be more of a pro protector over them and a watchman over them. Amen. And just to, you know, say that, you know, at times that when I see him or visit him he'll say something perverted and it make you just want to cover up with everything in the room like and stay away from him like that it was gross it was nasty and you don't understand why a 30 year old want to sleep with a 10 year old or however the case was back then or however old the child was i mean it makes you want to hide yourself but he always said oh perverted things to the girl you sure live fine and stuff like that. Like, don't nobody want to hear that from your old, crusty, rusty, nasty tale. Don't nobody want to hear that. And you was married to my auntie. So who want to hear that? And why is y'all keeping him around? And it seemed like the ladies in the family sided with him and wanted to figure out who lying. Is they lying? No, just believe what your child say. So therefore, I wrote all of these things down and I told God how I feel about it. And what would I say? And what would I do to change that and protect that person? Or, you know in that situation. So you're going to have to write the same things down, write down exactly how you felt then, exactly how you feel now, what's triggering those thoughts now, and what would you say to the younger female or the younger male version of yourself? So write those things down, amen. And the next thing that I want to talk about is how, you know, certain boys have been molested, but they haven't told their parents. And so 
you figuring that the parents should have known about that, which they don't because God kept it from them because that's what have you opening up your mouth and telling your parents everything now. And that's what have, make you have an attitude on certain cases. You got a certain level of disrespect for them. And what it is, your parents is not a mind reader. Parenting do not come with a book of instruction. And I'm pretty sure that your parents did all they could to protect you. If not, it's an old school way of deal, doing things. And back in the day, them people used to just say, you know, what stays in the house, what goes on in my house stays in my house. They don't want you talking. And some of y'all just been afraid to say something, thinking it was going to hurt you or your parents. And then other times you don't want people to think that you're gay. But I'm going to tell you, you're not gay. You was a victim back then, but you're a victor now because you're going to get the deliverance that you need. Amen. You're not gay. And for those of you who have turned homosexual because somebody tampered with you and hurt you when you was a baby, stop allowing that to have power over you. You are not really homosexual. That's a demonic spirit that's attached to you then and it's continuing on in your today's life. Just think about it. If you had a choice back then as a little kid, you wouldn't have chose to have sex. You wouldn't have chose for them to molest you. You wouldn't have chose that. So therefore, stop allowing that thing to happen to you back then to have power over you. Now, you have to let it go. You have to take it to God. You have to write it down. Your feelings is very much valid. And so can't nobody take that from you, but you cannot let that thing that happened to you take your life away. It's taking your life away. It's causing you to make bad decisions. So you're going to have to let that go. Amen. Let it go. Write it down. Give it to God. Pray about it and receive your deliverance. Amen. In Jesus name. And it says that my next thing that I talked about is how I grew up without a father. I grew up fatherless or whatever. But I said to myself that I would go back and say to that little girl that. You need to look at the resources that God give you because he gave me rams in the bush. I would have cleaved more to my older brother, my aunts and stuff like that. And he, I did have a stepdad with my mom wasn't married to him, but they was together for a long time. And so therefore I would have been having showing gratitude to my aunts, my brother and my stepdad for the things that they did because God sent rams in the bush. I wouldn't have been ungrateful thinking about this one person. And so I had to forgive my dad so that I won't mistreat him on today while we have a relationship today, right? So you have to forgive the absent parents that wasn't in your life, even if you do or don't have a relationship with them on this day. But God, look at the rams in the bush that God did send you, amen. It was somebody there to help you. He, he said that he would never leave or forsake you. And God always sent a ram in the bush. So stop Start looking at your rams in the bush. Amen. But still write it down to let God know those feelings are valid. Those that don't always come up every now and then and to help deliver you, to get you the healing and deliverance that you need so that you can forgive and receive what the Lord have for you in this next season of your life. Amen. Deliverance is happening right now in the name of Jesus. And it says that uh, another thing that I was complaining about, it was being raised in the hood. And I feel like being raised in the hood, I would have had a better life lifestyle if I wasn't raised in the hood. I wouldn't have started having babies early, as early as I did. I wouldn't have been, you know, dealing with drug dealers and I wouldn't have been, you know, uh, drinking and smoking at an early age. And I really didn't enjoy drinking and smoking then. But at the same time, Friday was coming and you no know, matter of fact, Thursday was coming and everybody partied and working at Tyson Foods, good child. Everybody went out and drank when they was outside. So I was just doing what everybody else was doing, knowing now what I know now. I know that the Bible say, do not be conformed to this world. So therefore, do not be conformed to this world. If you at a young age, you just started drinking and smoking, put it down, especially if you really don't want to do it. That's not what you're called to do. But at the same time, everything that happened in my life had to happen in my life. And God gave the okay for it to happen in my life. And so therefore, God has, you know, created, you know, me for a purpose and for a reason. There's other people that's going through these things. And so I know that the Lord uses me and he's using those things that I went through to strengthen me. Amen. And the same thing with you. Amen. So whatever happened in your life, whatever you're not in agreement with it, get in agreement with it and allow God to deliver you on this day so that it wouldn't continue to destroy your present life and in your future. Amen. Get the deliverance that you need. God okayed the good and God okayed the bad. And so it, that don't mean he disliked you, but he just wanted you to, to learn something and he wanted to teach you something and you be, you are more protect yourself and you open up more and you just 
building a better relationship with God. Amen. So when you understand that part of it, change your perspective of everything that you went through and know that God loves you no matter what have happened or what happened to you. You're not the victim no more. You're the victor on this day in Jesus name. Claim it. Tell God to help you with it. But you're going to have to get that pen and paper. You're going to have to discuss these things with your parents. And you're going to have to just let it out. Because that's the only way you're going to really heal. Amen. And go back and talk to that younger version of yourself. In Jesus' name, do it through pen and paper, though. Don't keep doing this every day. Do it one time and trust that the battle is God's and he's going to deliver you. And then I wrote down, you know, to heal my inner child. I wrote down some things. The Lord told me to write down some things that I felt like I wanted to do that I used to do back in the day. And I told God, you know, I used to always dance. I would stay in somebody's drill team and I stayed playing the trumpet. I was in the band all the time. I loved it to sing. I loved it to write songs. I loved it to be in a parade and dance, all that good stuff. And I, you know, I was musically inclined. I played the trumpet and I had started learning the keyboard, but I never did finish, you know, trying to be a trap queen, drinking the smoke. And I put it all aside and was doing what was everybody else was doing. Amen. I was making some bad decisions back then. And so I said, I wrote all of this stuff down and I told God about it. But he said, all of these things that you felt like you wanted to do or you still could do, you still could do them. And therefore, you will be putting that time and energy into something positive, into them gifts that God had gave you from beginning of time before you was formed in your mother's womb. God said he gave you all those gifts and all of those talents. He says, you can get back started. It's never too late. You're never too old for it. Amen. So write this stuff down and tell God what it is that you would like to do and he gonna help you with it amen so all your free time that you spend thinking about what happened to you in the past put that energy into your music put that energy into writing songs put that energy into making videos or into dancing whatever it is that you want to do put that energy into that instead of sitting around thinking about that and so i was reading a book called self-care and part of self-care is forgiving is uh you know being healed, allow God to heal you, to let go of think toxic things that's controlling you and to have power over you. God, the Bible, the, not the Bible, but the book was saying that's a part of self-care is to free your mind and to be, you know, uh, not selfless, but to think of yourself and that's self-care as well. I think I said that correctly, but anyways, check in with your thoughts. And these are, the, you probably should get your pen and paper and write this down. It says to check in with your thoughts and it says, what are my thoughts right now? Number one. And two, it says, how does these thoughts impact my mood? Number three, it says, when did I start thinking about these things? When did you start thinking about it? Number four it says, how often am I thinking about them? Number five says, who is a safe person that I can share my thoughts with today? Who? And you got to be careful with that. You got to be very careful because some people will listen at your problems only to say, oh, well, at least I ain't going through this or at least my child ain't going through that. Like that just happened to me the other night. I was calling my sister because, you know, well, that, you know, what? I'm not going to even discuss that. But be careful who you call and share things with and vent to because people just there to say at least they ain't going through that. Amen. And so the things that the Lord sent you to go through, he'll send you somebody that you can talk to. Make sure you're talking to a person that really love you and really care about your situation and stuff like that. And they really can give you some guidance. Amen. And it says, go to the doctor, treat yourself to the doctor because everybody needs to know they're healthy. Everybody needs to know that everything is functioning properly. Amen. And it says to get you a therapist, a, psych a psychologist, um, uh, make sure you get somebody that you don't mind opening up to. And just because you're uncomfortable, but get comfortable. Keep going till you get comfortable to let it all out. Amen. The things that you don't want to share with people in your family because you're afraid they're going to talk about you behind your back, gossip and all of that. Go get your therapist and lay it all out in front of the table. And it also says to um, break generational curses. And that's how you break them by laying it out on this paper, giving it to God, going back and healing your inner child, talking to that little girl or boy, telling them what you would do different, telling them how you would protect them and letting them know that God loves you and God cares. If nothing else, God loves you and he cares. Amen. And so this battle right here is already won. And you know that the Lord, he never loses a battle. Amen. And there is no greater love than his. Well, you all, that's all I have for today. Remember to heal your inner child because what happened.
happened to you then no longer have power over you now. God is taking you to another level and he want you to forgive. He want you to let it go. He don't want those demons continuing to torment your mind, torment your mind in Jesus name. Remember that the Lord loves you and so do I. God bless.